Hello, I'm Alex Ace and uh, I'm from Russia, from Siberia originally. I was born in uh, Bratsk city and uh, now I'm living in Latvia for uh, six and a half years. Hello, Alexis. Hello, Mara. How are you? Very well. Today is a very sunny day, actually, and uh, I appreciated this opportunity to talk, talk with you. Yeah, well, we appreciate getting to hear your very interesting story, and I'm, okay. I'm ready to just dive right in. Tell us about where you're from and, and what that place is like. Okay, I'm originally from uh, Russia. Uh, Siberia region. This is uh, Irkutsk region and uh, uh, a city of Bratsk. Yeah? So it's closer to northern part of Irkutsk region. It's quite far away from Riga. It's all uh, almost uh, 6,000 uh, kilometers from wow. here. Yeah. Yeah. So I was born there and uh, lived there till my uh, school end. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, I can tell you small anything about my uh, city I was born in. Uh, this city is quite... Uh, um, okay, uh, this, this city uh, has uh, the biggest hydroelectric station in the world, I think. Uh, uh, and uh, it produces uh, energy from water, you know, there is an Angara river that uh, came to the special dump when, where the energy is creating. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, th this is the most popular uh, place and uh, electric station then in, uh, in our region. Also, there is aluminium plant uh, and uh, timber plant, actually. The one of the biggest in Russia, I don't know how it's in the world, mm -hmm. but in Russia, yeah, exactly. So this is very, uh, how to say, um, city where is the plants exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hydro. very industrial. Industrial, exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. So from other side, is the, the, it, it has the uh, artificial sea uh, after the dump, so Bratsk Sea, very big sea actually, and uh, it's close to uh, Latvia somehow because we also have sea, Baltic Sea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And is, is it a very big city? Are most of the people who live in the city working in one of these industrial places? This is not so big city. I think that uh, the uh, around 250,000 people live there. But yeah, you're right. The most of people works, work in uh, plants. Yeah. And are most of the people who live there from that region or talk a little bit about how your family maybe ended up there? Yeah. You know, where, where are people from? Were they shipped in to work in these plants? That this time? is a very interesting so story. Thank you for your question. And uh, I would like to tell you more. Yeah. So, of course, uh, many people from this place uh, is, uh, came from other regions of Russia. Uh, Moscow, St. Petersburg, central part of Russia. And they came in, uh, I think, 1965, around it. Yeah, that years where the uh, Komsomol construction starts in uh, Russia, and the, wh when exactly the hydroelectric station uh, started to build. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, there was a campaign actually for Soviet people uh, when when the engineers, workers, and other people, yeah, came to this region uh, where the winter degrees is around uh, 35 40 degrees with minus mm -hmm. yeah so not uh, not so comfortable 
Mm, but 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 uh, they were young and uh, they were much motivated to build this uh, biggest plants the biggest mm -hmm. hydroelectric station and so on uh, and also and also my parents came from uh, uh, my my mom uh, from central part of russia leningrad uh, region uh, and my father from uh, Ural region from Perm uh, region of Russia. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they came, they uh, started to uh, build, they are engineers. Uh, my mom is a construction engineer. So uh, yeah, she, uh, w uh, she was part of building of this uh, city also. Wow. Yeah, so basically the city Maybe there were some inhabitants of this region, but really most of the city was built up not very long ago. <laughs> it sounds yeah, like exactly. exactly. I, I consider so, the '60s not very long ago. So, uh, around uh, sixty years ago. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. And um, you had told me earlier. Um, some some interesting things also about your your family's history further back and where your family's from, which is a completely different region of Russia. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. So uh, actually, the, this is very interesting uh, story that uh, shocked me myself uh, in some time when I realized that I need to. Uh, search to find my roots yeah i started to talk with my mom unfortunately my grandmother has already died and uh, i need i can talk only with mom and uh, she partly what she remember she ex uh, explained me so much and i realized that i am vepsian Mm -hmm. So and what does Vepsian mean? <laughs> Vepsian, so what, what does it mean? <laughs> so uh, actually, I want to say that this is a, an interesting nationality or how to say um, people that live mm -hmm. in uh, uh, Russian region closer to uh, Finland, closer to R Russian uh, Karyal region and um, uh, this is part of Leningrad and Vologodskaya or Vologda region of Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a really close this Onega uh, big lake, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the around this lake and the rivers uh, beside uh, there is uh, there is a um, Websians living from many times ago, I hope so. Uh, and this is, um, I know this Latvian uh, Talta, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, these people, those people, uh, they are, uh, um, of course, uh, now Russian speakers, uh, but I believe that my grandpa used Websian language that now uh, really rare and I think not much that 6,000 people speaking now uh, Websian language. And uh, yeah, regarding my family, my grandpa, uh, he was Websian and uh, his family was, was Websian. But, uh, you know, there, is, there was hard time uh, when the Soviet, uh, uh, the Soviet came to this region after uh, Russian Empire, and they started to um, push them to use more Russian language. Mm -hmm. They started to push them uh, to uh, to forget their Websian language and culture, unfortunately. Yeah? Uh, and from other side, they started to kill Websians also. So it sounds like basically, and this is a little bit of an oversimplification, but it sounds like they wanted everything to be one way, to be homogenous, 
So rather uh, than there being different yeah. cultures and different languages, sorry, I'm, I'm not everyone to be one way. Yeah, it could be. I'm sorry, I'm not historian, historian but um, I think that uh, the uh, Soviet regime and communist regime that uh, existed their uh, time, uh, they need people to be uh, equal. Actually, mm -hmm. and, uh, they uh, decided to use uh, this Soviet culture, Soviet thinking, and uh, it was uh, really far away from Russian uh, nationality questions. Yeah, so it it was closer to some political things and political regime uh, and uh, also uh, communist mentality. When, if you know the communist mentality based on the uh, property and money should go to one place where some group of people uh, managed it mm -hmm. yeah? so mm -hmm. i don't know how can i explain more but uh, this this is like communist uh, communists uh, managing with the uh, people's money and property and unfortunately it was uh, uh, Raskulachivania. So this term, in, term in means that uh, one uh, one people came to another group of people and just got just you know how to say um, just got their property. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's it. But uh, that that's the past, and uh, we we. Mm, I know I I can only know some uh, part of um, story. I don't know what what exactly was, but I know that uh, uh, one day to my grandpa, uh, someone came and uh, get to prison, and after some three years uh, he was in prison. Uh, he sentenced to death death by uh, the special troika of NKVD. Uh, that means the the group of three people. Uh, uh, they are they were judges, and uh, they decided uh, without any investigations actually, and uh, they de decided to, um, to 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 kill people uh, if they are uh, if they probably was against uh, communist. Uh, uh, approach uh, when the when they come they communists uh, want their property mm. Mm. Basic, so basically, basically he the, had he had uh, protested or he was being too vepsian and they decided that was no good uh, I think that the protest of my grandfather grand grandfather uh, mm -hmm was based on uh, the property uh, he has big house uh, he has uh, uh, i think many animals uh, cows or you know mm -hmm. so he 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 was like um, kulak that special term in that meant uh, people uh, have property have houses have money actually mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because he worked very hard on their land mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so that's the story yeah that's a that's a very interesting story to me and maybe to some other people watching this because i think um growing up in the united states they teach us just about russia as one big country and only when you speak to people who have lived in Russia or who know Russia well, do you realize or do outsiders realize that there are lots of different kinds of people living in Russia, lots of different languages, lots of different uh, nationalities, for lack of a better word, and, um, and that it also sounds like under the communist regime, some of these people suffered because because there was this attempt to make everything one way um yeah. it's uh it's a, it's a very interesting look into into you know and this this big, uh, yeah. this big 
state, yeah, this this uh, uh, big uh, USSR need to leave somehow, and uh, of course, in that period before uh, uh, Second World Wide World War, uh, they need to leave, uh, need money. That's why the property uh, they mm -hmm. they've got from from yeah. uh, rich people. So you, your parents then then migrated to to Siberia. And yeah, look, there. Uh, after after my grand grandpa killed by uh, NKVD, uh, probably a Second World War started. Yeah, and uh, a family of uh, my grandma. Uh, was evacuated to Ural. Then uh, probably after Second World War, uh, they came back to Leningrad, uh, the uh, now Saint, Saint Petersburg uh, city, mm -hmm. Russia. And uh, after uh, my mom uh, slowly moved to Siberia with this uh, motivation of uh, building a city and hydroelectric station. Mm -hmm. And how long did you stay in that city? What, what did that look like? Okay, I was born in that city of Siberia and uh, stayed till my school ends. Uh, I was 16. I uh, finished my school and uh, we decided to move to Moscow region because I wanted to um, um, apply to university and I applied to uh, university, Russian State University for the Humanities and uh, got my law diploma there. Uh, so I lived uh, there in, in Moscow region uh, until 2014 when I moved to Riga. Oh, wow. And uh, obviously Moscow and Siberia are very different places. Can you? Of course, it's <laughs> also 5,000 kilometers. Just for people who have never been to Moscow, what, what is Moscow like? What does it look like? What are the people like? What are... Yes, Moscow know, is uh, the really big city. Uh, this is the capital of Russia and uh, all, almost uh, 12 and a half million people live there oh, now. That's big. <laughs> it's quite big, yeah. I don't, I don't know if New York is uh, New York big. is also about 10, 10 to 12 million. So it's okay, about Okay, so we can size. compare New York yeah. to Moscow. Yeah, so very big city with, uh, with very uh, interesting uh, metropolitan uh, metro system. Yeah, so uh, uh, skyscrapers, uh, big amount of people living everywhere. And um, yeah, so uh, um, for example, in 2014, I work in center of the city almost in the center and lived in this in suburban so i uh, tried to uh, drive by my car for two and a half uh, hours through the traffic yeah, <laughs> one way a lot of traffic <laughs> <laughs> it was a huge traffic comparing to riga is nothing yeah. you know when when we started to talk in riga about traffic for me it's just a game you know <laughs> yeah, yeah much it's smaller city traffic. much smaller traffic yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah having lived and, in uh, what, what and i want to say about so moscow is all what I want to say about Moscow is also, uh, of course, the big city with the big problems, ecology, water, uh, I don't know, uh, some uh, consumption, some um, um, uh, air pollution. And uh, of course, it's, it's just because of big city, big amount of cars. Uh, maybe sometime it's 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 became a problem for people mm -hmm. and they are trying to think where I can live more where where I can live uh, my life more when I can uh, mm -hmm. realize myself 
Yeah, people I'll people start to see. think after living in the city for a while, you start to think about how can I escape from the city? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you started to think about escaping from the city and also about any traveling that you did before yeah. escaping from the city, but but that process. It was an interesting story. I, uh, in 2013, I think I realized that I cannot live in Russia anymore. Uh, that was in a Russia story at when all. I at all, yeah. <laughs> that was a story when I traveled to Berlin, actually, mm -hmm. to Germany. Uh, I tried to travel much, but um, actually before 2013, I was uh, abroad just only one time in 1997, when I was in the uh, United Kingdom uh, to get my English college mm. for two weeks, I think mm -hmm. it was a short, uh, short studies. Yeah. But after that, it was a huge period when I uh, traveled only Russia, inside Russia. But 2013, I traveled to Berlin and I uh, again saw another life, another possibilities, another people uh, quite open to, mm, let's say, uh, my uh principles of life you can uh people in berlin uh, was quite open uh they're smiling so i remember it yeah so uh actually interesting city but that time i haven't thought about uh, movement to germany why no actually it was not my uh my thoughts that time uh, but i started to look uh to move uh how to move abroad what i can realize myself for um and so on and i started to look of uh, to opportunities to study more so i had my uh, specialist diploma that's now recognized as, as master's degree yeah but that time it was a specialist diploma uh, in russia that uh, i can not recognize as uh, international degree mm -hmm. and i wanted to uh, study more uh, one time I met one guy in the internet that uh, told to me there is an opportunity to study in Latvia and I uh, uh, find a way how to uh, get my second diploma in law, uh, studying law in Latvia, so European law and uh, civic law that I studied and it, it's that time is it, it was still my interest and I I decided to move to Latvia and uh, one winter uh, day I just uh, flew to Latvia by air and uh, started to live here and, and study here. And so, yeah you had told me that this was not your first experience with latvia so tell me a little bit about um, the person that you knew when you were younger uh, who was Latvian, and also some of your travels that you had done to latvia earlier yeah okay thank you for a very uh, interesting question it's uh, very important for me because uh, i have connection i have a strong connection with latvia from my childhood so uh, our family friend uh, lived that time in Siberia. He was Latvian. And uh, we tried to um, help him uh, in any case. And it, actually, it was a friendship, you know, it was a friendship. And um, after, I think, 1991, he moved back to Latvia. Mm. Uh, yeah. And... Uh, after that time, I several times with my mom flew to Latvia, to Riga, to Yurmala, uh, just the summer period or so on. And uh, we met with our friends' family here. So uh, that was how uh, connection to Latvia started with my family. And uh, 
Yeah, and uh, I like Riga very much. That's why I also decided why not to live in Riga because I like the city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the city, and I think that um, I wore I was in Riga also even before or after my Berlin journey. Uh, but I was in Riga also, and I uh, mm, decided that this is very modern, uh, interesting city uh, uh, with the big opportunities. Mm -hmm. So it sounds yeah. like between having known a Latvian who then moved back to Latvia that you visited when you were yeah. younger, as well yeah. as looking outside of Russia in general, as well as having an opportunity yeah. to study in Latvia, all these things came together to say, okay, <laughs> move, move to yeah, Latvia. And, uh, and the more about uh, our friend Leonids, uh, his mm -hmm. name. So uh, unfortunately now he's, uh, he's dead. Yeah, so he, at uh, that time he was, uh, I think almost 70 years old. And uh, yeah, uh, but uh, I, Mm, new Latvian mentality from him mm -hmm. it was very kind. What are uh, some of the things that you remember about him that feel Latvian to you? Yeah, I remember his uh, eyes with the glasses. Mm -hmm. uh, his eyes was very kind. Um, also, I uh i was child yeah so but but i i realized that he is like a european guy mm -hmm. he looked like maybe he used uh other dress or i don't know how how he looked like but he looked like uh, not soviet you know mm -hmm. not like uh, my father or my uh our friends where we live he looked um like European guy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even it was uh, just a finish of Soviet period, but he already looked uh, different. Yeah, somehow. that sounds so nice. It's it sounds like such a nice story to have this childhood memory of someone who is very different, but also that you that you were spent time with your family and so it was almost like your experience of um getting to see a different way of of being in a in a very sweet way um yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. so I think, mm -hmm. and i think that uh, we both our family and our friend from latvia we are we were very appreciated to know them ourselves, you know. Um, we were very appreciated to know each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was uh, really natural emotions uh, because uh, he, he was just a friend. He has wife, but uh, uh, my mom and uh, my, my father, uh, we, we were just friends, yeah. And uh, every time he said uh, to our family, thanks for help. I don't know how much we actually did for him in Siberia, but I think that my mom tried to do uh, the, uh, her best. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because not so much, uh, and not so many Latvians lived in that region of uh, mm -hmm. Siberia. Mm -hmm. I think was like alone in our city mm. so, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah oh that's so nice <laughs> that's a sweet story yeah, I think so. yeah interesting memories from my childhood and also uh, that's why i oh i'm open to say that i have a strong connection with latvians mm -hmm. mm -hmm. before i came to latvia well that's that's a perfect segue to then moving to latvia so yeah. was it as simple as you applied and were accepted to a Latvian uh, law program? Is that the process yeah. that you took? Yeah, actually, yeah. Uh, 
I came to uni university. Oh, it was a business school. Um, I came with my documents. I accepted. Uh, I then came to embassy with all package of documents and uh, received my visa or maybe even uh, residentship. That time it was uh, a bit different. Uh, I think I received my residence permit, permit and uh, came to Latvia, started mm -hmm. to study. And of course, in, during the year, uh, I found a job also. Uh, by law, I could work only 20 hours per week, but mm -hmm. uh, it was okay because- Because uh, you were a student, you could only work 20 yeah. hours a week. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I studied and I worked, so I have some, I had some money to leave. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, quite good time it was actually. And after my studies, I uh, came to uh, another um, company with the job. And I actually, I'm working there from that time. Oh, wow. And now with the residence permit uh, as a employee. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the initial things when you first got to Latvia, what are some of the things you had to do or that you chose to do to get used to being here <laughs> or settle into being here? Yeah, very good question, Mara. And uh, it's fully connected with my life. Uh, I started in Latvia. So um, when I came to Latvia, it was a very interesting program. It's, its name was uh, Integration Center. It was a physical structure. It was in uh, Kaltiela, uh, Kaltiela in center of Riga, in, in the uh, old city. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I came to that integration center and I said that uh, I, I'm a newcomer. I want to integrate myself in a culture that I know less than enough. And uh, I want to start uh, study Latvian language because uh, I don't know, I didn't know any of Latvian word. Yeah. Uh, that program uh, was uh, very good that time. And I started to uh, study Latvian already in 10 days, days from I uh, came to Latvia. Wow, you just... <laughs> yeah. And also it was an integration cafe, as I remember. Mm -hmm. Cafe, or how to say, yeah. Uh, uh, we sat in, uh, on the table, in the table, yeah. Uh, with the uh, people from other countries, different countries and uh, with a teacher. Uh, and we just started to talk about uh, some daily life or about some household duties or study of or what what whatever uh, what we are doing in Latvia yeah mm -hmm. so um, and also it was uh, coffee and a really nice atmosphere there uh, there I met interesting people from around the world. For example, my friend Bakit from Kyrgyzstan. Uh, and uh, then he uh, became a part of my uh, project that I will talk more later. Yeah. Um, just, a, just another note about language. I think yeah. Latvia sometimes has some I'm going to use the word tension <laughs> about language because of because of the Soviet history and because there are so many Russian speakers who, especially in Riga, as a big city, live in Riga, and um, I think sometimes there's a perception that because Russian speakers can speak Russian in Riga, they don't they don't they choose not to learn Latvian. So I. I think it's important to highlight that you came to Latvia and that you started learning Latvian already 10 days after you arrived. And that at this point, and you've been studying and studying because you're already at a C1 level with Latvian. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, what I what I want to say that uh, it's their choice, of course, people that uh, not uh, study in Latvian, but uh, I decided for myself to integrate fully in Latvian uh, business, in Latvian uh, mentality, in Latvian, uh, yeah, I don't know, history or so on. Uh, and uh, I need to know Latvian language, of course, to understand people at first. Uh, also, it's impossible to uh, continue with uh, business studies or work without uh, knowing language at some uh, intermediate level, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, when I realize myself as Vepsian, I now fully understand Latvians because uh, Vepsian language, uh, as I mentioned, uh, only around 6,000 people speak in the world. And uh, in Latvia and in the wo in world, all, almost uh, two or a bit more million people uh, speaking. And it's, it's also less than enough. And uh, mm -hmm. this language is uh, under uh, opportunity of... Uh, oh, is, is under, under dangerous of... Uh, non-existing yeah okay and uh, we also need to help this language uh, exists exist and uh, uh, I now realize it fully after uh, understanding that I'm Websian and uh, my language is already almost dead yeah yeah, yeah. so one of the things that I find very interesting um, that you did. You talked about the integration center. You talked about meeting some of these people who are coming from all different places. Yeah. And you actually started a project similar to this one before we started this. Yeah. Um, actually, was... when I met Mara, uh, <laughs> I realized that uh, she uh, started that Saproto project uh, just, uh, you know, in a modern way of my former Voice of Migrants project. <laughs> yeah, tell us was, more about what that looked like. Yeah, it was an interesting project, part of uh, Providus uh, mentoring program that I uh, was part of. And then uh, it was my idea to start uh, Voice of Migrants uh, blog website when people from other countries living in Latvia um, had the chance to uh, inform people about what they are actually doing here in Latvia and uh, what is their interest to be here and uh, what is their problems or uh, positive moments or even mm -hmm. negative moments uh, when they are living here, how we can help them, how people in Latvia can help them, or maybe how they can help people in Latvia uh, integrate themselves to business or work here, you know, to, to give opportunities, uh, uh, give and get opportunities here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was an interesting project. And actually, as I remember, it was um, up to 10 people, probably eight people that came to me and said, yes, we are part of your project that guy from kyrgyzstan one uh, woman from ukraine uh, one people um one guy from russia another guy from moldova uh, that now i think that every uh, member of this part uh, of this project they're still continuing living here Oh, that's even more interesting now that it's been about five years since you started that project. Yeah, yeah. more than five years since, this, since I started. Uh, now this project uh, closed and uh, finished and the, the website closed, I, I think. But uh, it was interesting that uh, stories of eight people we could uh, read almost uh, during five years. Mm -hmm. But part of that 
members I know personally, and uh, I know that they are continuing to live uh, in Latvia. So that's amazing. Yeah, well, we'll have to um, maybe post your link in the comments of this video so that people can uh, take a look at the work that you did, especially because it was in English as well, yes? Yeah, it was in three languages, Latvian, mm. uh, Russian, and English. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, and then you can reach all the audiences that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Um, Let's talk about you a little bit too. So you you said that these people talked about um, the differences that they observed and the things that they really liked about Latvia. Tell us a little bit about your own personal experiences. What what felt very different about living in Latvia? What felt really interesting about living in Latvia? What maybe were some challenges that you experienced living here? Okay, uh, about challenges, I like challenges, so that's that's why uh, I experienced some challenges here, of course, uh, when I, for example, uh, found a job uh, or uh, when I uh, come up, when I came up with uh, my diploma that it was, of course, not so easy to get, yeah, but, uh, you know, it was just experience and uh, it was not so hard uh, mentally. Uh, it was maybe hard physically, but it's life, you know. Uh, but regarding uh, the differences, uh, of course, I have uh, my own opinion about this, and uh, I see differences in people mentality, of course. Mm -hmm. For example, I met so many uh, kind people here, I just wondered. Uh, you know, uh, Russian people sometimes is very busy. They, especially in Moscow, yeah, they are very busy. I have friends, of course, until now uh, from Moscow, but uh, here people more calm and uh, more kind and have a bit much time for interesting things to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and also Latvians, they are pretty well worked with the past. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I never had a problem with the xenophobia, never here. When I uh, heard from some people, oh, there is a xenophobia, no, no, no. I just say it's impossible because uh, six and a half years here, I'm a Russian. So in six and a half years, I could experience any xenophobic moments, but mm -hmm. I'm not. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I cannot tell that here is a xenophobic uh, moments. I think uh, Latvian people uh, already overworked or how to say managed uh, their past with uh, Soviet Union mm -hmm. and uh, no problem with Russian people anymore regarding xenophobia moments here. Mm -hmm. And what are some things, just from your perspective, um, because it's kind of fun to hear what stands out to different people, what, what are some things that you think are particularly Latvian, that feel very Latvian to you now that you've lived here for, for a little while? I don't know, maybe that's, I now, learned how to prepare Latvian food, for example, gray peas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I myself can uh, prepare this food. So uh, I remember I came with the, uh, I don't know how to say pot or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, with these great gray peas. And uh, we sat with my colleagues and they said, it's amazing. <laughs> you know, the Russian uh, prepared this great piece uh, uh, better than in Latvia. And so, <laughs> oh, that's a high compliment. <laughs> yeah, it was high compliment, really. Yeah, yeah. Because I like to prepare food, for example, shashliks or I don't know, meat mm -hmm. or I don't know, any Russian food, but uh, this Latvian food, exactly. It yeah. Was amazing. Yeah. Um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm just, this is a side note, but I'm just kind of curious. You made me curious now. What, what is a very typical food from the region of Siberia that you're from? Hmm. Okay. Maybe some kind of, um, Pirazzini, mm, some kind of, uh, I don't know this English word. Like some kind of pie, like bread with meat yeah, inside? Yeah, pie, pie with uh, some uh, uh, potato inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, maybe chebureki also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so pie yeah. with... So uh, fried with on the outside. Meat inside, <laughs> yeah. But you know nothing extra special because uh, in that region remember the people from all over the Russia, mm -hmm. all over Russia. Mm -hmm. and so they uh, brought all of their different food yeah but but uh, regarding regarding Vepsian food I want to say that uh, there there are special uh, food mm -hmm. uh, exactly in that region and the Vepsian uh, people uh, prepare the special Vepsian food. For example, kalitki. This also um, uh, food uh, with uh, uh, processed uh, potato inside that bake in the oven, mm -hmm. and also many fish food, uh, fish uh, piragi, mm -hmm. uh, piragi with fish. Uh, oh, yeah. nice! It's. Yeah. It's uh, amazing because food is one of those things that feels so emotional for people and can yeah. be very connected to a particular place. And so it's like yeah. when you visit a place, you want to eat the food that they make because you want to experience that place. And yeah, when exactly. you, I understand you fully. Yeah. yeah, when you're away from home, you want the food from that place because it reminds you of home. It's, it's interesting. Food is such a strong a uh, strong emotional connection for us um, and, and yeah. a very cultural connection for a lot of people too. Yeah. So, um, so you've been in Latvia for a little while now. Yeah. How do you feel about, um, let me think about how I want to say this, but how do you feel about belonging to this place? Is this a place that you think you will spend a longer period of time in? Does it feel like a place that you belong um, or just a place that you feel connected to in some way? Yeah, I feel uh, belong to Latvia. Yeah, exactly. I feel connected to many people here. Um, also, I understand the difference of uh, mentality, nationality, and it's normal for you. I'm modern. I'm um, I'm still young, so I'm 38 now, but I'm still young and feel uh, myself young, and uh, it's it's okay for me to feel any difference because it mm -hmm. exists. But regarding Latvia, I think after six and a half years, uh, Latvia said to me yes you may stay here yeah so it's uh, it's very important for me because of course uh, during first years i uh, thought how latvian people how latvia uh, can uh, integrate myself can uh, permit me to stay more uh, but i think that they and uh, latvia permit me to stay Nice. Any final thoughts? Uh, my final thought that I can advise people to go and uh, investigate their roots. Maybe mm -hmm. it's very interesting because uh, I know many people don't know their roots and uh, it's it's for example for me became very important and i i just realized that i'm vepsian and and, and also mm, to love country where you live so if you're living in latvia just uh, try to respect people and love latvia and that's that will be all amazing instead of even 
COVID crisis now or some difficulties, you know, you always can find people who will help. And this is amazing. Well, thank you so much. So lots of interesting things that you shared with us today. And um, I hope I shared just one small part of interesting. So yeah, yeah. Uh, thank maybe you. Next time we can talk more. Yeah.